Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. This is great. DrupalCon Barcelona. Great times. All right, this session is on DevShop. It's an open source product that we built, free and open source. Gives you hassle-free hosting and testing. So hassle-free, right? That's kind of a bold statement. <laughs> but easy is good, we think. So what makes it easy? What makes it hassle-free, right? We've tried to make it easy to install. You've got a single standalone install script. Right? You get that script, you run it, you've got a dev shop. We've made it really easy to upgrade. So we have a single command that you run that does all the steps you need to upgrade this server to the latest version. It's really easy to extend because it's built in Drupal and Drush itself. Right? So if you've built Drupal sites, you're familiar with how dev shops put together. Most importantly, we've made it really easy to use. If you get push, you're use, you can use dev shop. Press the button, we like to say. There's a lot of buttons we like to press. <laughs> we've made lots of buttons and made them, tried to make them pretty and easy to use in order to be productive. Right? This is all about streamlining the development process and being more efficient at building websites. So yeah, you know, we all want to be productive. It's a lot of work sometimes. Uh, in order to be productive, you really, you want a place to work, right? You want a clean, nice place to work. So DevShop is analogous to a workshop, right? If, you're, if you build things, you have a workshop of some kind. It's got tools, it's got space, everything you need to do your job, to build things. So DevShop is like a developer's workshop, right? Has servers, tools, all your environments, everything you need to do your job of building websites. To be a good, to be productive, you want a clean, organized workshop, right? You know, as clean as possible. I don't know if what your workshops look like or your development shop looks like, but maybe it's something like this. I don't know. The servers. People work with sometimes end up looking like this. Really, we want it to look like this, right? Nice and clean, something to be proud of. So, DevShop is user focused. In this case, the users are the, the developers, PMs, everybody, right? Who's DevShop for? We really feel like it's for everyone. Like, it's a website you go to, you log in, you see everything that's going on in your, in your workshop. Everyone, it helps, helps everyone. Sysadmins, developers, project managers, QA people, CTO, the CEO, clients, content managers, designers, they all are involved in this process. DevShop is like a common place for them all to go and see what's going on. As a sysadmin, right, I want to automate myself out of a job. You know, so that's kind of the old joke about sysadmins, but it's really true. As developers just want to build websites. You know, project managers just want to make sure they do their job. QA managers want to make sure they do their job correctly. CTOs obviously want to ensure all the projects go well. Clients want to make sure their only project goes well. Content managers simply want to create content and designers want to design. So th these are all the things they like to do. Things they don't like to do, sysadmins, they really don't like to get calls at two in the morning, right, that the server's gone down. Developers really don't care for solving server crashes or figuring out why the site's not working. Project managers really don't like having to satisfy customers. QA managers really don't like to yell at their team, but you know, maybe they do, they, they can do that a lot. CTOs, you know, they really don't wanna watch everything fail. Once, when, if your workshop's dirty, failure can be pretty common. CTOs really don't like that. Clients really don't want their websites ever to go down. Content managers really don't want to lose their content. And designers just don't want to be sad when they see what their, their work actually on a website, right? So DevShop helps all of them, right? What does it give you? Time, right? So it's an automation system, right? So we're going to save time by being more efficient, by being more productive. How do we do it? With a sweet interface, <laughs> you know? So this is what the project homepage that looks like. It's a dashboard. Right? Shows you every single project you're working on, gives you the Drupal version, shows you the installation profile, shows you the Git URL so you can easily copy it, get to work, and shows you links for every little environment you've got running there. In this case, all three are green with a check. That's good. 
You can use any Git repo with DevShop anywhere. You can clone from Acquia, you can clone from Pantheon as long as it has access with SSH, you can use it. This is what a, a project looks like, or project dashboard, right? There's a link for settings, link for logs, a link directly to the GitHub repo, a little drop down tells you what branches and tags you got, tells you what install profile there is, when the last time a commit was detected, you can have as many or as few environments as you want. Each one of these blocks represents a website. Copy of your website. This widget is the production wit site, right? So it has a name, you can name it whatever you want. You wanna call it live, you wanna call it production, call it whatever you want. The branch there says it's on the live branch. It can change to a tag if you deploy it with a tag. Drupal version, you can lock it so you won't destroy your data and you can mark it as the live site, which is the little lightning bolt there, so you know this is my live site. I'm not gonna touch it. Shows you all the URLs you have attached to your web, this particular environment. This one's got three. Has a button to log in. You press that button, you wait a second, you get a link, and you're logged in as, as, an, as the admin, and you're good to go. So if you have access to the DevShop front end, you always can get into the website. You don't have to remember the password. Three days ago is the last time a commit happened on this site. The files link goes to a files browser right in the web browser. The backups shows you all the backups you have. And then we have the deploy buttons, right? We can deploy code, we can deploy data, we can deploy a stack, which is the servers that it's running on. So when you would deploy code, you can choose a branch or a tag to deploy to. You can change any environment from one branch to the other, change it to another tag, do it however you want. You can deploy data by copying data from other environments. This includes database and files. There's even a little trick you can copy from any Drush alias if you hook up remote environments. And then there's the stack, which is the set of servers that are running your environment. You can fit as many environments on one server as you want, but you can also attach other servers. Right? And have, different, have production be on a different server. Create a whole array of clusters, whatever you want. So, <clears throat> branch environments are updated continuously. Every time you push code, pulls to that environment, make sure it's always up to date. A tagged environment, this tag never changes, right? So it just sits there. You have to manually change it to another tag. It's very similar to Aquia Cloud if you use that. Task logs, right? So every environment has a little tasks display. It changes dynamically depending on what's running. And you click that little button there and it drops down the latest tasks. You can click the logs to go to the full list and see when things happened and what. You click the uh, little sliders button, that's for settings, gives you another drop down. You can go to the environment settings. There's a button to download modules into the project. You can click that clone environment button to copy the environment to make a duplicate. Fork an environment means copy it and create a new branch and push the branch so you're ready to go with a new branch. Disable environment allows you to turn it off and back on again before you delete it. If you delete it, if you disable it, then you can delete it. There's a setting in there that lets you just turn it off, d destroy it, but it's always safe to have that second step, right? So with a button, you can push the verify that makes all the, sure all the files are set up right, all the permissions are set up right, everything's working correctly, make sure Apache's working correctly, flush all caches, rebuild registry, run cron, run DB updates. You can do all these things manually if you want to. You really don't have to though, because every time you push, it'll run those tasks for you. Backup, restore, and run tests. In the dashboard, you get this nice little Git URL display, so developers can just go there and copy and paste to go develop locally. Again, you get a drop down with the branches and tags available. The webhook URL is set up automatically now with GitHub, so you don't really have to worry about that. But the drush button is really handy. You push that, you get a pretty pop-up window shows you all the Drush aliases, very easy to click and download, get access. Note the note here, if you need to access, you actually need to upload your SSH key, and we've got that too. So thanks to Drupal, we've got SSH key module. Just like the one that's running on Drupal.org, you upload your SSH key, it puts it on the server for you, and you're ready to go, you can connect to that environment. And your developers can use this too. So, DevShop deploy, right? This is, this is the original driver of this project. Deploying is, can be a pain unless you have the tools to automate it. You know, before Pantheon and Acquia Cloud, it was like risky to deploy things. Like you'd change the code and remember 
oh wait, I need to go clear caches, I need to run updates. No, we're gonna standardize that running deploy hooks every time the same. Did you clear the cache is not a question. That <laughs> it always has the same answer. Didn't have to, okay? Every time you push code, clears the caches. This is very useful for productivity because themers, for example, can just push a template. They don't have to go to the site and clear the cache afterwards. They don't have to do anything. It will run those hooks every single time you push your code. Run database updates as well. Revert features is an optional deploy hook. And you can trigger a test run as well after every single git push. Have a little feature in there that detects if you use Aquave Cloud and use their cloud hooks, and write your own scripts for your own deploy hooks, we find them, notice that you have them, and we'll run them for you as well on the DevShop server. So compatible with Aquia Cloud sites. So DevShop tasks. These are the things that run, right? Tasks are like drush commands. They run on the, but they run on the back end, but they're triggered from the front end. So this allows you, as a, just a, through your web browser, to go and click clear cache, go and click rebuild registry, all of these things. The tasks are logged, they, it knows when they failed, it knows when they passed successfully, it knows when they had errors, and it shows you very clearly with these icons and the timestamp. Form fields in the front end become drush options in the back. So you can create your own commands very easily if you needed. Uh, this is the download modules task, so you simply type in the modules you want, you hit save, and it queues up a command to run Drush DL views C tools. Same thing, similar thing for deploy. These checkboxes get passed to options. Drush provision deploy, update dash dash cache. Okay, so very easy to basically build these kind of pre-approved steps that you can run from the front end on the back. So each task run gets its own page. They're actually nodes in the front end Drupal site. So you get a sweet page like this that tells you success or error, tells you what happened, tells you how long it took, tells you the date that it ran on and how long ago that was, and it, tells, it gives you the link directly to the site that it actually ran that task on. Running tasks is better than running commands manually, right? If you're in there with the terminal, you're a genius, you're amazing, you can hack on the terminal super fast and easy, it's great, right? You know how to do that. But seriously, running tasks is better. <laughs> It saves a log of what you did, right? It controls access to who's allowed to run those tasks, so it's done safely. You can't make a typo, you know? It's, it's built in. History is maintained, right? All the logs are saved. You can go back, see what happened when. You can't do that when you're just running commands manually on the command line, right? So tasks are great. So there's a lot of different tools built in the dev shop in addition to what we already saw. Like I said, there's a Browse, right built into the uh, website front end is a browser so you can click and see what files are actually on your server. This was helpful early on when deployment might not have worked. I could go in and see, is that file actually there? Did it actually show up on the server? Well, oh, click, view, easy. Cron is automatically set up. You don't have to deal with that. It has a cron queue that runs on every single site that's hosted on DevShop. You don't have to set that up ever again. Backups are automatic. You can have that configurable to run backups on a, on, a, on a queue, you know, any time frame you want. You can lock an environment so it won't destroy the database and it logs all the errors to the front end so you can, and makes them visible in the front end so you can easily go in and see what happened, what's going on, what's wrong, all that stuff. So speaking of logs, not only did we show error logs, we went ahead and showed a commit log in there too. It's just really handy, right? You don't have to go into the server, figure out what the latest commit was, what changes happened, none of that. You just click, logs, commit log, error log, watchdog, easy. All in one place. Download modules button, I already touched on, but I'm just so excited about it. <laughs> you don't need to clone your code to add modules to your project. Whoa, right, you just type in the name of the module and theme you wanna download. You can even type in a commit message right there. It'll queue a command in the back end to download them add them to git, commit them, push them in one press of a button. Same thing with committing features, right? If any drush command can turn into a task, drush features update all, git, commit, add, all that stuff. So many clicks. Fill out the form, press the button, run the task. Makes it really easy to manage features all the time. Update all, git, commit, git, push. 
one press of a button. So, like I said before, DevShop servers, right? You can connect as many servers to a central DevShop server as you want. So it was able to deploy sites to remote servers independently. Each project, each environment can live on its own server if you want it to be, live somewhere else. Very simple to set up. Okay, we made a command that does it all again. <laughs> it will set up all the packages. It will walk you through the process of connecting over SSH. It will make sure that it actually can connect. It'll make sure that it actually has the right IP. Walks you through every step of the way. Provisions the entire thing using Ansible playbooks. Gets Apache running, gets MySQL running. Does the entire process and you're good to go. Really easy to configure once you have it set up. So in each project you can configure the default environment settings, and this means that whenever you create new environments for that project, they'll go onto that server. So you can say, I want this project on this server, I want this other customer to be on that server. Very simple to separate your sites out onto as many servers as you want. Right in the UI, we have the stack button. This was, you saw this earlier. Shows you the IP address, shows you what servers the system is, the site is running on. Very simple, very easy to configure. Change it, you can move it, you can migrate sites between environments. No problem, all through the front end. Most importantly, right, this is where it gets fun, the testing part. Testing can be kind of hard. It can be a lot of maintenance, a lot of work to get a testing system set up. This system just does it. So given I'm on the home page and I just see welcome, right, this is kind of an assumption we all would have, have about our website. We want to see something on the home page. This is an actual Bahat test. If you have not used Bahat yet, Go do it, it'll change your life. You write these tests in plain English. Like, that will run. A machine will read that test and show you if it works. Okay, so it outputs the exact text of the test when you run it. This is the output of a running test. If it's green, it worked. If it's red, it failed. Right, so given I'm on the home page, then I should see view GIS hub data for this particular project. That text is gone, so either there's something wrong with the site or maybe the test is wrong. But we know, because this screenshot is from the DevShop interface. So right in the web browser, you can click and see the test results. Very quickly allowing you to fix whatever you have broken. And allowing everyone else that is working on the website to see, also see what's broken. You know, so a PM can click there and say, hey developer, I noticed your test is broken because th that line of text is no longer there. Maybe you should go update that test, because tests that aren't passing because the copy is wrong, very easy to fix. So this helps to avoid exponential complexity. <laughs> you know, Drupal, have you ever built a uh, access control based site? Like organic groups, private content, social network-y type stuff. It gets very, very, very hard to test all of those different use users, like who is able to see what, this person created it, so this person should hide it. A human being really cannot process that type of work manually, right? Your, your brain starts to hurt when you start to pretend to be four different people in one test. So as an example, right, this test would work, right? If, if you had a, let's say you only allowed blog, uh, your blogs to be visible to logged in users. Running this test will run through these steps for every one of these roles. Right, so if the hat swaps out the role with the item in the table, so for, for each one of these it runs, given I'm logged in with the anonymous role and I'm viewing a blog post, then I should not see my blog post and I should not see edit. And then it runs it again as a logged in user. The logged in user, authenticated, should view, be able to view it, but should not be able to edit. Go through the same thing for moderator role, go through the same thing for administrator role. This is incredibly helpful and will make you way more productive because you can't tell when you're breaking things because you have to go through this mental exercise of pretending to be four different people. So you can, with the hat, it makes it really easy to write not just tests but whole sets of tests that run as in different iterations over your project. Feature of DevShop is that you can sp specify if you want all the tests or just some of them to run on every Git push. So with each environment, you can check the boxes and say, this is a special environment. My developer's working on something complex. I only want this one test to run every time you push. Right? It gives a faster feedback loop. Developers work faster. They get the feedback faster. Things move a little smoother. In general, you can just run them all, though. It's up to you. 
one of the great things about the hat tests as well is because they're written in English, everyone can contribute to them. Right? You don't even need to clone the code. GitHub.com gives you an edit button right in the website. This is what it looks like. You can type it in in English. And when you scroll down, you can even fill out, check this little radio button here that says create a new branch and start a pull request. Super, super easy. You just press that green button, name your branch, PMs can test. Right? I've trained PMs to write a hat test and submit pull requests. Pretty cool. So, back to the standard, right? We all know you should have a dev site and a test site and a live site. We should, we've all pr probably learned that by now, right? Well, in reality, there are some problems, right, with that workflow. It can be a challenge. It works pretty well if you're like a solo developer, right? But as you grow, as you, as you have a team, having straightforward development like that can really be confusing, right? Because everyone's pushing code. Multiple efforts can be colliding. You can, people overwrite each other's work. People are pushing incomplete work, you know, and then you have to figure out, well, how do I deploy this, right? If, if this developer has some incomplete code in there, you're constantly having to rebuild these environments too, right? If you push new code, you know, like how often you hear like, hey, is anyone on, does anyone mind if I destroy dev and sync, resync it up with the database of production? What about tests? You know, it's kind of, a pain, you ask that question and you sit around waiting for people to answer and you don't know if you're gonna ruin someone's day, right, by destroying those environments. So it generates confusion. You know, the larger your team is, the more likely you're gonna have that situation. So there is a better way, right? And some, some people, are, a lot of people are already doing this, right? This isn't necessarily new, but pull requests, right? Branches, using Git to separate all the work, you know, per task or per developer, however you wanna do it, you, you can now, there's, Many blog posts about this, like Lullabot created a system that has some tools to do this. There's lots of blog posts, like I said, about how to do this. But DevShop has a built in as a product. You get pull request environments, right? Pull request driven development. You open a pull request, you get a new environment. It gives you a link. You click the link, you see, the, you see your site, you see your code running on the production database, right? Clones it. Multiple tasks can be developed in parallel. Very easy to configure, right in the project settings. You check a box to create environments for pull requests. You check the box to delete them when they're merged. Very important. <laughs> I've seen QA servers that forgot to delete those PR environments and you end up with like hundreds of websites sitting there filling up the server, filling up all this file space. It's not good, you gotta have that cleanup process in place. The deployment method for pull requests is configurable. You can either run, the inst run an install profile or you can just clone live. So it's nice if you're, depending on what you're working on, if you're building a distribution, it's gonna be really handy to run the install profile from scratch. If you're building a regular website, you usually wanna clone live. And this is what it ends up looking like. So the interface changes slightly when you're using pull request environments. You get a nice picture of your developers. There's our front Jacinto there. <laughs> your deploy failed though. I don't know what's wrong with your code. <laughs> so each uh, pull request is on its own branch, as you can see. Build Manager 30 or 15 Enhanced Data Preview. Each one gets its own link with the name of the branch in the URL, so it's very easy to click it and see and remember what this particular environment is for. Uh, and again, every time you push code, it runs the deploy, make sure the cache is clear, make sure that your deploy hooks run, and then it'll actually run the tests as well. So every single push from every single developer will run those tests separately so that you can all get your job done quickly and easily. This can grow, and then you end up with something like this. <laughs> you get a lot of websites. So it's important to review code regularly and merge things when they're done, but this shows that you can really, really take off. You can have as many environments as you want, really. Uh, it's almost too easy to create them because you get, end up with things like this. So you want to try to tone it down and merge your pull requests and get someone to review those things. But with DevShop, if you're running tests and you have good tests, you describe your bugs well, anybody can review those and anybody can click that merge button and say, good work, you're done. So, this is what it looks like when it's running, that's what it looks like when it fails, that's what it looks like when it passes. Good job, developer, <laughs> your tests are passing. Congratulations. So, beyond that, GitHub integration GitHub has these incredible APIs that let you put information into GitHub, 
right? So when you submit a pull request, we can actually notify that pull request, put a little notification there that says DevShopBot deployed this code to this URL. That deployed text is a link directly to that URL. So without even going into the DevShop interface, developers see, there's my code, there's my environment, I can click it and see if it worked. PMs too, all their bosses, everyone that's in charge can see what's going on, easily click, total transparency, it's a lot of fun, okay? And here you can see GitHub has a commit status API where we can flag a commit as passing or failing on multiple levels, right? So there's two built-in uh, commit statuses for DevShop. There's the deployment itself, where it's running through as if it were deploying to live by clearing caches and doing all the deploy hooks. And then the second one is for tests, and if the, if the test pass or not. So both of those things are, are very important, right? Because the test doesn't include the deployment part. <coughs> so once it passes, it looks like this. And it's very friendly, green color, makes you very confident that you can merge that pull request if your tests are up to date. So write good tests. <coughs> ah, and by the way, those details links over there, those go directly to the test results. So developers not only get a link to their environment, they get a link straight to the test results, they can see what happened, what went wrong, very quickly and easily. Again, dashboard, right? It shows your whole operation at once, every project, every environment, this updates dynamically now. So when it's running a test, it'll spin, the little gear will spin. If it passes, it'll turn green. If it fails, it'll turn red, right? Lots of little environments, lots of little environments. Pretty cool. So how's it all put together? A little bit of technical background. Warning, it's on agar. <laughs> If you know Agar, you might be groaning a little bit right now, but that's too bad, because it's kind of awesome. There's a lot of good things about it. It does a lot of things really well. It takes care of a lot of the work that you have to do to have a good hosting system. It sets up Apache for you, files, database, settings, everything is handled automatically the right way every time, right? Here's the task logs. It shows change permissions of the settings file to the right permissions, change, changes everything the way it should be. The ownership of the files, handled, right, you don't have to think about it. Tracks every module, every theme, every version that you have installed on your site. Very easy to give you insight into your site. Each environment, it does this for, you know. Very neat, very cool to see from a high level everything that's going on on your website. And it's just secure by default, you know, follows best practices. So, future of DevShop, already working on it, right. Docker, so cool, get into it later. We can have a boff on Thursday, come, we'll talk about what we're doing. It's powerful stuff, Docker is amazing. We built a tool to make running Drupal sites, any, any site really, it works WordPress and anything that runs in a container. We built a command line tool which will be the new backend to DevShop and maybe other tools we call Terra. And that we also have a boff about and haven't blogged about it yet or any of that stuff because it's still pretty early but very exciting stuff going on over there. We've got some great contributors like uh, Jesus Molivas who built Drupal Console, uh, Eclipse GC, Chris Vanderwater is contributing to it because he's an Agri user and wants to help build the future. He built the plugin system for Drupal 8. We might be able to use the same plugin system for Drupal 8 in this Terra command line tool. So anyway, another presentation, come to the boff. It'll be a lot of fun. DevShop use case, right? We're using it a lot of places right now in production. It works. So one of our biggest partners is called New Civic. It's a company from New York. They built a distribution for Drupal called DCAN. It is a open data portal. So it's very, it's, it's neat. It's like a content management system for data sets. Uh, so they are spinning these up all over the place for a lot of customers. Like the country of Sierra Leone. They have an open data portal now, which is very helpful for them, right? Transparency and how their government works is key to improving these countries. EbolaData.org is a website they created to simply share information because their data portal is built for that. Both of these are hosted using DevShop on uh, IBM software because the project is a partnership with IBM and the World Bank. North Dakota, we have a data portal up for them running on DevShop in their data center. So they have a very secure data center. Uh, I have to do all sorts of things to log in there with the <laughs> VPN and 
random pins and everything, but it's a Linux server. DevShop can run on it. I have to manually deploy because it's behind a VPN, so GitHub can't tell it to deploy. It's still no problem. Log in, click a couple buttons, deployed, no problem. And then healthdata.gov is another great site they built and launched for the uh, Health and Human Services for the United States federal government. And that site is actually hosted on Acquia. They host a lot of other sites on Acquia. They host a lot of sites on Pantheon. But DevShot makes a great standard platform for testing and for building your websites regardless of where those sites are hosted. Right? So some of those screenshots before of the dashboard are all of their websites in one place running basically as a continuous integration server. So it's really easy and fun to build on DevShop, to test on DevShop, but to host it anywhere. Right? So it's one of the fun parts about being open source. Oh boy, so movie time. <laughs> All right, this is a movie, right? I recorded it, so I don't, it's not a live demo? Okay, I'm confident now. All right, so this is my website. <clears throat> I created a dog blog. <laughs> this is our dev shop server. I've got a link here for my live site. I've got a beautiful dog. <laughs> who needs a website. Uh, this is the hat test I wrote to test this website. I'm going to commit some code here because I added this test. Right? I'm going to push this code to that branch, the dev test branch. And once it pushes, it's a little slow on the internet. And away it goes. We push the code. So there's the GitHub repo. I look for my branch and I'm going to submit a pull request because it was just on a branch. I didn't push to live or any of that stuff, right? So there's my branch. I can see my two, two commits ahead. I'm going to give it a nice name so everybody knows what it's for. Just adding some tests. I'm not going to do any heavy-duty development today. Just going to make sure that the site works. So when I click Create Pull Request, it should notify me right away, right, that we have queued a deployment, we have queued a test run. So the developers know it's coming. Your site's going somewhere, your code's going somewhere. It's going to be online, ready for you to click and review. So we're going to patiently wait for the site to clone. This is a real-time video, no editing. <laughs> so we're going to hold our breath for a few minutes and watch this go. There's a link directly to the PR, so I'm just checking out the PR. Oh, look, yeah, DevShop bot requested a deployment. There's the URL it's going to be at. Okay. I guess when it's done, I'll be able to click that. So, still going to just be a little patient. It's copying the entire site, copying the database, copying the files. It's going to be an exact copy of that production live site there. And it looks like the clone finished. It's got to do a couple extra steps to import the info into the dev shop server, but oh, look, the deploy went well. All right, green checkbox. So, the cache is cleared okay. I assume the update's cleared okay because passed. If the updates or caches didn't clear correctly, that would be a big red X. And uh, almost there. Almost there. Patience. So the links go back to the test results. If I reload here, I believe this is when it works. Yep, there it is. So my PR2 has a link. I can click it. And there it is, clone of my website. Custom URL, specific to my branch, no problem. Easy to click, send that around, send that to your manager, send it to your boss saying, hey, look, I got the new features, just go to this link. We use it even for clients. We're like, feature in progress, need feedback from a client, give them a PR link. Right? A link to that URL, check it out, what do you think? There's the test running. Right? It, it loads in real time. This test happens so fast, though, because it's a short one. But this page will load the test as it's running in real time, and you can watch it run the tests. It's a lot of fun when you have a longer test. I should have written a longer test for this video. <laughs> anyway, you can see, oops, it failed. All right, Red X, what happened? Click the link for details. Go directly to this beautiful full color test results page. You can see the text. Oh, I got the text wrong. All right, so I wrote a test that was bad. Instead of me, it should be the life and times of Flora Bell. That's my dog's name. <laughs> so, going to commit that change. Very simple. Just fix the test. Commit it. 
I'm going to push it. But right before I push it, I'm going to make sure the GitHub page is open because I want to see it happen in real time. So I click the dashboard. I click the GitHub icon. It goes to the goes directly to the page. And when I push, I should see some more activity on that page. So I'm going to push and then quickly go back to GitHub. And boom, there it is. All right, GitHub is a nice real-time web page as well. Shows you requested a new deployment. So it puts, it's really cool, it puts the notification right into the timeline. So you see commit, commit, deploy, commit, commit, deploy, and then the test run. So there it is. We see the deploy running. It's got a little animation there, a little slider and the gear spins. It's hard to see the gear spin if you're in the back. But there we go. Turn green. Right. Deploy worked. Cache is cleared properly. Update database ran. No problems. Now we're going to see if the test run finishes. But again, patience. But we're not still not going to click anything manually or trigger anything manually. It all strings it together for us automatically. And go back to the dev shop dashboard just to see what's going on. Aha, now the tests are running. It should finish. Boom. Green. Show all checks. Deploy success. Test success. Click the details link. See how it passed. Everything is green. We are good to go. Nice work, developer. This PR is ready for merge. So, like I said, it's just GitHub. Notice we never left the browser, right, after we pushed that code. Click the button to merge. Because the project's configured to delete PR environments, when you merge that code, it is now queued for deletion. Right? So the deletion takes a few minutes as well because it's getting rid of everything, cleaning up after itself, database, files, Apache config, everything. And if I reload here, you'll see no more site. All gone. So now that that PR environment is deleting, I think we're ready for a new release. You notice the live environment is on version 2, and we have not created our tag yet. So I'm going to go create our next release by checking out the master branch, pulling the latest changes, because there are new changes, because we merged it on GitHub. We didn't use the, even use the terminal to merge. I'm going to tag a new release, push the tag B3 back to GitHub, right, go back to the dev shop, and in a minute, I will kn it will know that there's a new tag. Right now it says two, now it says three. Right, so there's the tag. It's available for deployment. I click deploy code on the live environment. It tells me what I'm going to do. I can decide at the last minute to change the deploy hooks if I want to. So we want to clear caches and run the updates. But you don't have to. And now we're done. And now we're going to sit and wait and watch this go by in real time and not click anything and hope it works. <laughs> so the deploy is running. I'm pretty, we're, we're almost 100% sure that it's going to work, right? Because we just tested the deployment, same code, same database in that PR environment, right? Consistent deployment. Oh, it's green. And then it goes away, verify. So immediately after the deployment works, it runs a verify script just to make sure all the files are in place. And then immediately after that, uh huh, that passed as well as we expected. Run tests. Changes dynamically right in front of your eyes. Now it's running the tests on production and that passed as well. So that's it. Right. We're going to click the link, see the site is up and running, and we're good to go. Clean deployment, full circle, pull request environment, the tests, and an awesome website with an awesome dog <laughs> somehow writing their own blog. I don't know how it happened, but she loves that grass just hanging on the grass. That's it. That's the video. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thanks a lot. So, anyway, you can try DevShop very easily. It's uh, got a Vagrant, the, the repo itself has a Vagrant file in it, so just clone the code, run Vagrant up, and you'll get a DevShop server. We use that for development as well. You can read the docs of, uh, on how uh, to enable development mode, so you can work on it if you want. We really want you to come contri contribute to it. It's an open source product. It's Drupal, right? It's the Drupal of DevOps. So come help us out. If it doesn't do what you want, come help us out. Tell us what's wrong with it. Join the chat room. Tweet your anger about it. We want to know what's wrong with it so we can make it awesome for everybody. Uh, like I said, come contribute. It's on GitHub. 
Uh, there's multiple projects associated with it because it's obviously a very big system. Uh, it uses Ansible playbooks for provisioning the servers, and the rest is just PHP. So it's really relatively accessible, and we're making it better all the time. So the next versions are going to be incredible. Uh, come connect. I'm on Open Dev Shop on Twitter, getdevshop.com, thinkdrop.net. Uh, and we built a little support portal as well. So every dev shop installation has this big purple help button. So if you ever have any problems, just push the button, type in your question, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you, leave your message at the beep. <laughs> uh, Devshop.support, that's a real URL. Lots, all these new URLs, a lot of fun. Uh, yep, coming up on tomorrow, we scheduled two boffs. It was a dev shop workshop. Come bring your computer if you want me to help you spin it up. If you want me to help you, you know, learn more about it, come talk, and whatever you want to do, just come to the boff. It'll be a lot of fun. And then after that one, in the same room, so we actually have a nice two hour block there, uh, is going to be our Terra planning and strategy session where all the contributors are going to come together and start working on it, do some more things, talk about the future, teach other people that want to learn about it. Come, to, come learn Docker. We'll all be, we're all, we all try to be very helpful and collaborate. And uh, I guess that's it, right? Questions? I guess, yeah, there's a, there's a mic in the back. So if you don't mind lining up so we can record it and everyone can hear you. Thanks. Uh, just a quick question. This, this looks amazing, by the way. And I love <laughs> the you. integration with, um, with GitHub. Mm -hmm. Does it also work with GitLab? We, we use that. Yeah, um, it would just be another module to create. So we want to support every popular Git and system. Git bucket. And yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's rel all, they all have relatively similar functionality. So yeah. there's a DevShop GitHub module in, in core. Okay. And we would love contributors to help out to create, like, other, other modules that will work with different Git providers. I just don't personally work with Bitbucket, so it hasn't been a priority. Uh, but, again, please help. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi, we use Ager and make files a lot for doing our builds. So just wondering, it looked like you were using full Git repos. Yes. Does it still work with make files? Or? That is, all, has been a feature request for a long time and is simply complicated. And we want to figure out how to do it right. Yep. But it's just, it, you know, it is really complicated. <laughs> we want to, like, the repo then, where, where does the, the repo go? Uh, Come to the boff. I would love to talk about how yeah, to make that happen. Yeah. And, and it really is something we want to make happen, but we want to do it the right way. Okay. Uh, and we also want development to be quick, right? So the rebuild, if it's a make file, every time you push is going to be slower, which, you know, people have, will have an okay with time with that. But, yeah, we'd love any help we can get to make that happen. Yeah, uh, two questions. Uh, first one, how does it work with multi-site at Aquia? With Aquia multi -site? Yeah, so if you have multi-site... Uh, set up at Acquia with their dev cloud. Or not dev cloud, but their enterprise right. cloud. Right, right, like the um, site factory, is that what they call it? Uh, no, it's just like, uh, their, so in, in Acquia, in their enterprise uh, solutions, mm -hmm. you have your own uh, stage and dev sites and production sites, and you can have multi-sites on them. Right. So they handle it that you have several databases and you separate them by different domain names. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't use multi-site, but you could just create an environment for each one of those sites if you were to want to use it you know, for testing things. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. And how does it scale when you start having a database that's one gigabyte and data it's four gigabytes? Yep. So... You can add additional servers, so you can move the database servers around. Um, built, it doesn't have, we don't have like built-in automated scaling yet, but because it's Linux, you can basically set up anything you want. You can set up master-slave databases, you know, manually. We're going to do more and more to incorporate automatic scaling tools um, and make that as easy as possible. But for right now, it's basically just, you know, manually set up. The Agar has a cluster for the web servers. Uh, but the database thing, you would still need to basically just follow best practices and set that up on your own. Okay. Again, it's on the ev trying to make everything automated is on the roadmap. So down the road, we'll have more of that. Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, I have uh, several questions. Sure. One of the questions actually already answered regarding the Mac files, but uh, my question is, 
This dev shop is actually extending Eiger Hostmaster or replacing Hostmaster. And also I look at uh, you have a dev shop provision. Is it mm -hmm. extension of the provisions or replacing the provisions? Yes. And then I also look at that you are using Eiger 6.1, right? And then... Uh, two, but yeah. But now only two. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you already upgraded. And then it yes. uh, seems like the dev shop 2 will... Seems like you'll use Eiger 3 because it's yes. already released. Yes. Uh, and Basically, it does my question. Is it like extending or replacing? Right. So it, uh, it there's a installation profile called Dev Master, which replaces the Host Master install profile, but it uses all of the hosting modules. Okay. Is, uh, if that makes sense. Right? Okay. So I'm like uh, same with provision. Okay. Provision so is still used. Okay. As well. So I guess my question is, we have a lot of custom Iger uh, tasks that we mm -hmm. created. So. Uh, probably they all should work fine. It will work right. Yep, they should all work fine. Uh, yeah. The environment, they're not environment nodes, they're just site nodes, right? So it's an we have a record in the database for each environment, but it's still just a site node. It's an Agar site node, so any task that Agar can use, uh, DevShop can use as well. So basically, uh, how we extend DevShop is, is, this, is similar to when we actually extend Agar. Yes, exactly. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hello. Wow, it's amazing work. But uh, you show how it's work with uh, Git, mm -hmm. uh, GitHub actually, and it's work pretty well. But uh, what about uh, Bitbucket? Uh, Bitbucket. Yes, uh, actually, someone had that question earlier, and it has a, 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 a basically a dumb webhook receiver. So if if you can you can hook it up to anything that has a has a post receive hook. So mm -hmm. it will work with Bitbucket now, but it won't do any of the smarter things like uh, deploying just to one environment or the pull request integration. But because it's a very common feature request, and we hope to have more contributors to just plug it in. You can copy the DevShop GitHub module and just follow the pattern and uh, recreate it. And we would love to have more people contribute and try to make that happen. I'm just unfamiliar with Bitbucket personally, so I haven't done it. We work with it back <laughs> That would be great. Yeah, I know a lot of yeah, a lot of people do. The gentleman earlier asked about it. So, uh, like I said, we listen to our users. So you're setting the priority of the backlog right now, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, please come to the BOF. We'd love to get as much help as we can. There's just a lot of moving parts and a lot of work uh, to, to make this project work. So, mm -hmm. uh, that just hasn't come around yet. But yeah, like I said, please help. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it looks very promising, uh, and I'll probably join the buff or something. Mm, thank uh, you. The question I have is about the only restriction I see in using it. It uses intensively subdomains to which mm -hmm. I don't think I have access. Can we work with subdirectory instead? Subdirectory instead? Um, I don't. Uh, probably not, right? Because it's it's a Git repo. The files are just direct are cloned. Um, I mean. I'm really, I don't know. I mean, the subdirectory thing, that has to be a folder, right? There's no kind of magic DNS thing we can, you can do for that, right? Like, it, that, that, that's a good question, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So anyway, yeah, he said that, uh, you know, Agar itself supports that subdirectory system. So um, it, it should work. Now that I'm thinking about it, right, uh, as it, sh it should work. It should, it should be possible. Um, it would just, it, it'll take, probably take a little bit of tweaking. You know, it, it clones the, each project, clones each, each environment into a folder, its own folder on the back end. So it would just, it would be, it's worth exploring. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious, why, why don't you have access to, like, the DNS subdomains type thing? Being part of a big organization, yeah. we don't choose everything. Right. So. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's internal. Yeah. So I, it, that's that's good to know uh, that that situation exists for some people. So we should definitely look into how to make that work. And just to have an idea, what would be the migration effort if you have already a continuous delivery with Jenkins and the like? Well, it's basically it would just be like moving any other site. So you put Git, put your Git site in there, and you can manually pipe databases in. It's all it's all Drush and aliases on the back end. So you would just have a do a little bit of a manual import, you know, from the command line. Um, 
yeah, just like moving any other site from one server to another. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Uh, right, so yeah, just to repeat, the question was uh, if you can let clients sign up and kind of create, request their own sites. And uh, I mean, the answer is is kind of yes, because it's, it's, it is Agar and it's, and it's Drupal and it's all permissions based, but we haven't implemented like per user access control on the projects and sites. So if you can access the project, you can see all the sites. But that's been a very, another very common feature request is to you know be able to control who can see which particular site, um, and we would love to implement that. So, All right, let's talk about it. Okay, I don't have a final slide, so that's it. Thanks for coming.